Well, we continue with uh, our coverage uh, today, an entire day dedicated to commemorating uh, 365 days of this genocide against the people of Palestine and also 75 years of occupation. And uh, as we witness this full year of this genocide in Palestine, it is not only the 365 days that we remember, uh, it is 75 years of occupation that we cannot ignore and uh, it is painful. It is painful for us to look back over the past year. Uh, Salah Media has covered this genocide. We've seen the scale of brutality. We've seen the destruction uh, in real time. And we've seen how innocent lives have been uh, uh, lost under the most inhumane, under the most brutal, under the most uh, barbaric manner that uh, human beings could actually carry out. And we remember many many an incident many a massacre that has taken place and uh, as much as it is painful for us can one imagine how painful it is for people who are palestinian by birth who are palestinian by descent who are in the diaspora who are far removed or perhaps even very very close a case of so near yet so far in a country like jordan where you see right across uh, uh, Jordan, uh, just uh, barely uh, a few uh, kilometers away, Masjid al-Aqsa being desecrated, the West Bank, and what is playing out in Gaza. And uh, what are Palestinians actually feeling? What do they remember? What do they think about on a day like this, where we look at 365 days, we see this genocide has been nonstop and relentless relentless and uh one of the people that we were fortunate to meet up even at the global conference that had taken place here in south africa from jordan was uh, sister lina abu jaradi who is uh, in amman in jordan sister lina assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh is always an absolute pleasure and we thank you we do appreciate you taking time out Wa alaykum as -salam. Thank you so much for all the work you've been doing in Salam Media. I'm so impressed by your dedication to the Palestinian cause, and it means a lot to me as a Palestinian. So thank you. Well, we will continue, inshallah. You know, the Almighty gives us the strength, and it is only through people like yourselves as well, it's through our brothers and sisters in Palestine, that we are inspired to continue with the type of work that we are doing and more importantly we ask of acceptance from the almighty but again coming to today i'm sure lina a lot flashing through your mind so many memories someone of palestinian descent to see what is happening to members uh, your brothers your sisters members of your own family and we're not only talking about gaza we're talking about the entire palestine yeah for sure uh, i think I don't know how how do we react as people who have been waking up to a genocide on our TV screens every every day, uh, knowing that our brothers and sisters in Gaza are living this um, daily. Um, it's almost incomprehensible. Incom um, and as a new mom myself, I I just keep thinking of, you know, mothers who are waking up without their children or who have to bury their children, uh, or who can't find food for their children. So it's very it's very hard. Um, but I was reflecting on October 7th and how we woke up last, last year to the news that, you know, these Palestinian resistors essentially broke free from their prison. And I think this is something the West can never understand. You know, that sense of victory that I think all Palestinians, all marginalized people, all indigenous people felt in that moment. And so although, you know, 40,000 plus uh, Palestinians who were murdered is very hard to reflect on. I think it's also important to remember that October 7th was the beginning of the end of Israel. And it was really a moment of awakening for so many people all around the world who had never known uh, what Palestine meant or, or the strength of Palestinians. Um, and so I'm trying to, you know, reflect on the positive, although it's very hard considering, you know, the bloodshed and the massacres that have been happening and that, that are happening today, that are continuing to happen. Yes, but what actually amazes me, uh, Lina, is uh, having covered this entire genocide from day one since the 7th of October 2023 is uh, how positive 
the people of Palestine has been. And we've done countless, we've done interviews, hundreds of interviews uh, throughout this entire year. And uh, when you speak about the beginning of the end for this occupying entity called Israel, and I've heard the sentiment over and over again, and uh, we are truly inspired just by the positive sentiments that are expressed by people like yourselves and uh, generally the Palestinian nation as a whole, that uh, we will go through. Yes, we will suffer, but at the end of the day, victory will be ours. Yeah, I think it's tied to faith. And of course, I like as a Palestinian in the diaspora, as someone who isn't living the atrocities that they're living daily, um, like what I'm reflecting is nothing compared to the patience and resilience and strength of the people of, of Gaza, the people of the West Bank. Um, but I think it goes down to their faith. Uh, we, like God, we know that God promised us that, you know, one day Palestine will be free. Um, and I think it also goes back to this idea that they're like in the history of the world, no murderous regime has been sustainable. Um, we we saw the French colonization of uh, Algeria, which lasted much longer than the the, the occupation of Palestine, um, and and that fell. Uh, we've seen many uh, you know very strong nations rise and fall, and so I think. Um, I, I think we have that belief that one day Israel will come to an end. And I think the the way that Netanyahu is uh, acting in such a barbarous bar manner, uh, in a way that I don't think we've seen in, in decades, um, even people of Lebanon were saying that um, the, the shelling was something that they haven't even seen from the 2000s. It was the worst shelling that they've witnessed. Um, in the history of Lebanon. So I think that Netanyahu is speeding up this process of the end of Israel. And I think at the end uh, of barbarous regimes is when they really uh, act out in horrendous manner, uh, in the worst manner. And so I think all of this is really just uh, speeding up the process uh, of Palestine being liberated. Obviously, it's not easy. Obviously, it's horrible. Um, uh, but but I think we're going to get there. And I think the people of Gaza, they have this in their hearts. They know this. And, and even if they've lost family members, even if they're martyred, they know that if they're martyred, they're in a better place with God. And if, if they're still alive, that this is something, a burden that God has placed on them um, that will ultimately, like the fruits of this will ultimately be down the road of a free Palestine, of their children or their grandchildren living in a liberated Palestine free from this atrocious Israeli regime. Obviously, this has come at a huge price, Lina, uh, you know, to people, to their lives, to their families, to their property, to all the death, the destruction, the deprivation, the degradation that takes place, and also in terms of the leadership as well. And uh, we know that uh, the Palestinian people are resilient. Uh, we've seen how leadership has been taken down since even if you look at one looks like an organization like Hamas from Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, Dr. Abdulaziz Rantisi, and now, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Ismail Haniya as well. And then we've seen what has happened to the Lebanese, to the Hezbollah leadership as well. But uh, the Palestinians uh, have been obviously honored with the special quality to rise above all adversity, no matter how serious and how bad or this adversity is that they are facing, but they are a nation that will rise. And uh, just on Wednesday, I conducted an interview with a professor, uh, Professor Nidal Sakar, and he expressed the same confidence, the same positivity that you are, you have, that. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is actually digging uh, the hole that will lead to his own demise and the demise of uh, the Zionist entity. And he says, he even went on to say, comes 2028, he says, book your tickets, we're all going to be meeting in Ramadan in Aqsa. Inshallah, yeah. Ahmed Yassin, uh, he predicted the end of Israel in 2027, I believe. So my mother keeps reminding me this. She's like, we're almost there. Uh, and, and I do believe that like the shift that we we witnessed this year, we've never witnessed it before in terms of global aw uh, awareness, in terms of 
all free people around the world uniting against Israel and really seeing Israel for what it truly is. Um, and so there is reason to hope. Um, of course, it's still very hard for the people of Gaza. They're really bearing the weight of the liberation of the entire Islamic ummah, ummah in a sense. Um, I mean, when we see all of the other Arab countries that are really under a soft colonialism, they're not really free. Um, so Gaza really has the only free people in the region and they're bearing this weight and uh, they're paving the way to a free Palestine and hopefully to a free ummah. Um, free of colonization, free of the Western powers that are exploiting our resources. Um, I was I was seeing that, um, you know, France, Australia, they were all commemorating uh, October 7th and meant calling it the worst terrorist attack. And, you know, how they they're one year on, they feel so bad for the victims of October 7th without any mention of the Palestinians, of course. And so this shouldn't surprise us. I mean, we know that France was a colonial power. We know that Australia uh, massacred the indigenous people there. So I think it's time for us to break free from this subservience to the West and viewing the West as some sort of moral leader. Um, and I think it's time for people to unite against that, against you know the colonial re regime, the soft colonialism that's still happening today. And I think that's why the the cause of Palestine is so much bigger than just being a cause for the Palestinian people. I think it's a cause for all free people all around the world. And I do believe it's going to create a shift in the world that we live in. Well, certainly. And uh, in Nelson Mandela's famous words, you know, uh, South Africa cannot be free until Palestine is free. And uh, the Ummah will not be free until Palestine is free as well. So, Selina, shukran, jazakallah khairan so much for your time. As always, we do appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure we will be engaging a lot more with you, inshallah, going forward. But for now, we thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.